good evening respected teachers senior colleagues and dear friends at the outset let me thank sgai for giving me this opportunity to talk on us guided gastroenterostomy the outline of my talk would be as follows usg entails placement of lumen opposing metal stent under us and fluoroscopic guidance from the stomach to the small bowel distal to the obstruction patients with gastric outlet obstruction needs some procedure to relieve their condition to maintain adequate nutrition as well as to improve the quality of life as they have poor gender condition and limited survival minimally invasive methods are preferred there can be many causes malignant as well as benign diseases for this and eusg is mainly done for malignant diseases surgical gastrogenostomy has been the mainstay of treatment for gastric outlet obstruction and in patients with malignant obstruction this procedure can have high morbidity because these patients are poor surgical candidates and may have prolonged hospital stay after the procedure and this may even delay cancer treatment the other option was enteral stent however it has the possibility of migration and there can be tumor in growth or overgrowth eos gj is the new kid in the on the block the procedure is minimally invasive there is less chance of stent obstruction for benign uh, stricture and obstruction dilatation is a possibility however you need to have multiple sessions and also there can be complication in 3 to 7% of patients the indications of eus gj is mainly gastric outlet obstruction which is mostly malignant it can also be done in afferent loop obstruction and any symptomatic gastric outlet obstruction can be a potential candidate for eus gj there are certain sites which are preferred for eus gj obstruction at the anteropyloric region duodenal bulb second or third part of duodenum however if this lesion is extending into stomach body first portion part of jejunum fourth part of duodenum or dj flexure then this would be a contraindication or may not be possible multiple levels of obstruction is also something where this uh, this technique should be should not be done patients with gross ascites is a relative contraindication coagulopathy or any contraindication for therapeutic endoscopy should is a contraindication for this procedure also multiple varices in the path also will create problem eosg can be a gastroduodenostomy when the puncture is to the third or fourth part of duodenum and gastrojejunostomy when it touches the jejun sometimes rarely it can be a gastrocolostomy which is inadvertent and this is something which you want to avoid during a procedure the steps include eus visualization of an in a target intestine segment from the stomach to be good if you have a distended and a stable loop of bowel and this is possible by instilling fluid or can be by a device assisted by targeting by also by targeting a balloon fill which is fluid filled or a fluid filled segment of intestine with double balloons so once you have a targeted segment then this is punctured with a needle or with an ec lamps assembly if it is with a needle then you pass a uh, instill fluid distend it then uh, dilate the tract pass guide wire and then uh, place a stent and that is always lamps so after placing a lamps you have a fistulous communication between the stomach and intestine, uh, intestine and thus the gastroenterostomy uh, is made there are different techniques which have been described one is direct ge technique then assisted ge technique or and the third one is the e pass technique the direct ge technique in, involves uh, uh, puncturing a, a loop of bowel from the stomach in the bond uh, 
Uh, and then once this loop of bubble is punctured, you instill uh, a contrast dye mixed uh, with the methyl blue and saline to distend this loop of bubble. And then after that, a guide wire is passed into this loop. And then this track is dilated with the four millimeter balloon and followed by placement of lamps. However, there is a problem with this. The, the targeting uncertainty is there because sometimes you may not see a good loop of bowel. And there is a risk of pushing the bowel away during the eyewire placement and dilatation. Assisted GE technique is another method. It can be either balloon assisted or a device assisted. Balloon assisted, when you place a, a balloon uh, into the proximal jejunum uh, over a guide wire, and this balloon is then distended with the uh, contrast and uh, methylene blue mixed with uh, saline, and then this is punctured. The other one is device assisted, where a nasobiliary drain is placed over a guide wire into the proximal jejunum, and fluid is instilled to distend the loop of bowel, and then again the same process is repeated. There are certain concerns because the rapid infusion of large volume of water can lead to hyponatremia and volume overload. And hence, it is advised that use, to use saline. And again, fluid overload can occur. So it is advised to limit volume to less than 500 ml. The runoff of fluid while instilling uh, can lead to distension of colon and mispuncture of colon can occur, leading to gastrocolostomy. So it is advisable to use glucagon or buscopan during the procedure and always avoid time delay. The process can be, has to be quick. The other procedure is the EOS guided double balloon occluded gastrogenostomy bypass technique. Here, a specially designed tube is passed through over tube over a guide wire into the proximal jejunum. And fluid is, uh, the, both the balloons are distended and fluid uh, and the saline mixed uh, contrast and methyl blue is filled between the balloons. And uh, this uh, uh, distended uh, uh, loop is identified from the stomach using the uh, US scope. And then this is punctured and a lamps is deployed. So in the pre-procedure, uh, the uh, an upper G endoscope is a must to, to confirm the site of obstruction, look at the type of pathology, clear the contents. And a CT abdomen is, a, is always required a transverse and a coronal view should be inspected. This would act as a roadmap to locate a favorable bowel loop and also look for extension of tumor into the body or BJ flexion. And look always for multiple levels of obstruction, in, the, in which case it would be this procedure is contraindicated. After assessment and clearing of gastric contents, patient should not should be given only clear liquids prior to the procedure, should be kept NPO on the day of procedure. There should be a pre-anesthetic check. IV antibiotics should can be given prior to the procedure. Should have OGD scope, linear scope, guide wires, saline, double balloon enter tube or a uh, NPD tube, whatever you, the type of procedure which you are going to do, all this uh, accessory should be available. Electrocautery unit, fluoroscope support should be there and over tube if you are using a pass tube because the stomach will be distended. And if you pass the guy, uh, tube, it will coil in, in the stomach. The one of the most important thing which is required for a EUSGGA or EUSG is a lamps or lumina posing metallic stent. And uh, of the biflange metal stents which are available, the Axio stent and the Spaxa stent is the really lumina posing metallic stents. And uh, Axios is uh, preferred because uh, it is simple and easy to um, de uh, deploy. The lumen diameter, which is preferred, is 15 millimeter and 20 millimeter, so that you have got adequate lumen. Should one should be well versed with the lamps deployment after fixing, uh, unlocking, uh, puncturing with a pure cut current that you use usually use auto cut 100 watts, and then delivering the uh, distal flange, uh, withdrawing. Uh, making a dent and then uh, deploying the proximal flange. There are sort of practical issues with the EUSG. The double balloon EPAS tube is not commercially available. There are, in which case you have to use alternate methods like assisted GE technique using an NPD tube 
or a custom made double balloon tube. So now I will present a custom made uh, a nas uh, modified tube which we have made. That's a modified water entry tube. This has got a four ports, two for balloons, um, one hollow entry metallic stylet through which uh, the guide wire can be passed. So here we are doing an aperture endoscopy. You can see that there is some amount of uh, food residue. The duodenum is completely obstructed by the, uh, the infiltrating tumor. A guide wire is then passed across into the through the duodenum across the uh, DJ flexure yeah, uh, uh, into the proximal jejunum. Then after that, over the guide wire, the tube, the modified tube is then passed across, and then uh, across the uh, DJ flexure, uh, this tube is passed and the balloons are then inflated. Uh, you can see this balloon getting inflated here. And the second balloon is also in, uh, uh, follow, uh, inflated. Then once it is inflated, then uh, and the fluid is instilled into between the space between the two balloons, uh, then we pass the uh, US scope and then uh, they locate the distended loop of bowel. Once you locate the distended loop of bowel, then you, you can puncture it with the easy lamps assembly. Um, this is uh, another uh, patient where uh, this is being punctured. You can see the vertical loop, it's, it's good. Uh, you can puncture it. And once they puncture, uh, then the uh, distal loop, uh, distal flange is deployed, and then the um, stent assembly is withdrawn and uh, uh, then the proximal flange is deployed. You can see the gushing out of the fluid after the deployment. Then uh, we uh, uh, usually dilate with the CRE balloon to about 12 millimeter, never dilate more than that. And some people prefer not to dilate. We also do that in some patients. And after this is just to demonstrate after dilatation, we, uh, this is how it looks in a, on a CT. This is not required, CT is not really required after the procedure, but this is just to show you that. So the patient is kept in nil orally overnight. Uh, patient can be started on oral liquids. If there are, uh, there are no symptoms or signs the next day, we look for any pain, any signs of peritonism. Enhanced diet to semi-solid um, within a day. Uh, patient can be given analgesics if required. Patient is kept usually for 24 to 48 hours and then discharged. Uh, multiple studies which are available using different kinds of uh, techniques. The overall technical success is about 100%, uh, 93%. The success rate is 91%. The reintervention rate is about 11%. Complication rate of 11%, including misdeployment peritonism. So to summarize, EUS guided gastroenterostomy is a novel approach to provide sustained palliation of gastric outlet obstruction is effective, safe, and has potential to become the standard of care for malignant gastric outlet obstruction. The advantages include minimally invasive procedure and the longer durability than enteral stents. The technique needs to be standardized. Double balloon assisted technique appears to have an edge over other techniques. I am thankful to my team for all the help and support for preparing this. Thank you.